and welcome back. Today is going to be part two of my bookshelf unhaul. I really hope you liked part one because uh, here we are doing part two. Actually, as I'm filming this right now, part one is uploading. So I hope it did well once it was uploaded. I hope that you enjoyed it because I'm obviously already filming part two. So today we're going to be tackling the yellow books, the green books, the teal books, and even some blue books. I think I'm going to try to do all of row two up there so we can just chug right along. Hopefully this one won't turn out to be quite as long as part one did. Obviously I had a lot of like talking in that one. Like I talked about why I was doing this and I'm not going to be doing that in this one because Obviously I already gave them all my reasons for why I unhauled stuff and why I'm doing this project in the first place. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it, part one. I'll link it here. I think last time I pointed to this corner, but I'm pretty sure it's this corner. Anyway, let's get started with the yellow books. Kicking things off with Authority by Jeff Vandermeer, which is the second book in the Southern Reach trilogy. The first book being Annihilation, which I have read and I really, really enjoyed. I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to continue on, so I bought the second book and I have yet to continue on. I'm still planning on it. This is a series that I really want to read and enjoy. I think I'm gonna have to reread book one before continuing on just because I want to be like kind of in the right headspace to read the series. If you don't know, it's kind of like a really weird, like very strange sci-fi series and I think I think it needs to be read like very close together so I'm going to eventually reread the first book and then read the second one but definitely keeping this one. Next up we have More Than This by Patrick Ness which I feel like is a book that took booktube kind of by storm a few years ago like you know like six years ago at this point. Everybody was just talking about how like weird and like kind of like crazy the plot twist in this is and when I read it I definitely enjoyed it. It definitely is weird and I, I, I definitely don't think I could explain this book to you just because of how like strange it is. I personally didn't really find the plot twist that shocking. Like I kind of predicted it and to be honest I really haven't like thought about this book that much in the last few years since I read it. I Like I said I, I read it and I, I enjoyed it and I thought it was like entertaining and I could definitely see why people like it so much and, and obviously I'm, I'm a fan of Patrick Ness but I don't think I'll ever reread this just because like I already know what happens and half of the like value of reading this story or like half of the entertainment of reading this story is not really knowing what's going on and then like figuring it out as you go and so I feel like that would be kind of lost obviously on a reread so I think I am going to unhaul this one. I mean, it's a beautifully designed book. There's like this neat little cutout in the cover. And it's just, I mean, it's like aesthetically, it's so pretty. Plus I don't have very many yellow books on my shelf. So it's nice to have some yellow for the rainbow, but I don't think I wanna keep this. So this will be unhauled. Next up, we have Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. This was the first and so, so far only Haruki Murakami book that I have read. And I really, really liked it when I read it. I have considered it a favorite for a long time, although I don't really remember it that well. I think I probably should reread it at some point, but I will be keeping this because I did really enjoy it. Next up, we have The Nowhere Girls by Amy Reed, which was a book that was on my September TBR, but let's be real, we've pretty much abandoned that completely at this point, considering that I have only finished one book so far in the month of September, and it wasn't this one. This is a hard-hitting YA contemporary that I am still very interested in reading, and so I am not going to be unhauling this. Next up is The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri, which is a book that so many people just rave and rave about. I feel like it's a lot of people's favorite book. So many people talk about like just how like masterful this book is and I really want to read it and I just I think once I read it I will really like it. I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet but I will definitely be keeping it on my TBR and hopefully doing that soon. I don't want to say like I'm gonna unhaul this if I don't read it in a certain amount of time but I feel like I need to give myself that like deadline just so that I will read it because I know that once I read this I'm going to enjoy it. So I'm gonna say if I don't read this in the next year then I need to get rid of it. Next up is The Looking Glass by Janet McNally which is a book that I am still very interested in reading. I'm pretty sure that this is like a contemporary story but there's like some fabulism elements included as well and I think it might be playing a little bit on Alice in Wonderland which um, I don't love. Actually I really hate Alice in Wonderland. I have read and really enjoyed a Janet McNally book in the past plus I I have seen this you know just so positively reviewed and recommended so many times that I feel like I will enjoy it. Also the cover is just stunning like it would be I would it would break my heart to unhaul this just because how how beautiful the cover is. Next up is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This is the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy. I've already talked about it. Obviously I have read this. I really enjoyed it and like I said earlier I do want to continue on with the trilogy so at some point I will be rereading it but 
haven't gotten around to that yet, but of course I'm going to be keeping this on my shelf. Another book I will for sure be keeping is The Female of the Species by Mina McGuinness. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I actually just recently bought myself a copy because when I originally read it, I checked it out from the library. I actually have a full review of this book on my channel, so if you want to go watch that, I will leave a link to it. This is, like I said, one of my favorite books of all time, just one of the most important and hard-hitting books I've ever read, and one that I definitely wanted to own a physical copy of, which is why I bought it, and I will for sure be keeping it. Next up is The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. This is probably my least favorite Morgan Matson book. I feel like it's really just like way too long and there's a lot going on in this book. I read this and I thought it was fine. I, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I have not thought about it one time since I finished it. The only thing that would make me want to keep it on my shelves is that there's dogs on the back and on the front and I'm pretty sure under the cover oh no not under the cover just kidding haha <laughs> i think i'm gonna go ahead and unhaul this i don't think i'll ever like want to reread it and i don't really feel the need to keep it on my shelf so i'm gonna stick it in the unhaul pile next is not a drop to drink also by minnie mcginnis this is actually an art copy that i found at a used bookstore i haven't read this yet but i'm still really interested in reading it obviously i've read a minnie mcginnis book in the past and i really enjoyed it and it's made me want to read more books by her i have tried to read a another book by her that I didn't like and I ended up DNFing it but this one is more I think maybe is going to be a little bit more like my thing so I'm going to keep it and I'm hopefully going to read it and enjoy it. Next up is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I don't even have to talk about this book at all because at this point we all know this is my favorite book of all time and I will for sure be keeping it because it's my favorite book of all time. Another book that I love so so much I actually initially read this as an ebook and recently in the last year I think bought the entire series and that is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is the first book in the Remnant Chronicles which like I already said I read a few years ago and loved it so much like it's one of my favorite YA fantasy trilogies so I will for sure be keeping this as well as the other two books in the trilogy obviously. The next book is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich or Ruskovic. This is a mystery book that I think is more of like a literary mystery and it got really popular a few years ago I think because the title is Idaho and also um, the cover is just absolutely stunning like it is one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. It's one I'm still definitely interested in but I think I need to give myself kind of a time limit on this one so this one's gonna be like in the next like six months to a year I need to read it or unhaul it because I have had it for so long. Next up The Princess Bride by William Goldman another one that I am going to be keeping. This one I still haven't read but The Princess Bride is one of my favorite movies of all time and I know once I read the book I will just love it. Also it's a mass market but it's like a really floppy mass market which just brings me so much joy. So this one is staying on my TBR. Next up I have I See You by Claire McIntosh. I talked about I Let You Go in my previous installation of the Unhaul series which I have already read and I am unhauling that book. Because I read and enjoyed I Let You Go so much I definitely want to read more from this author and so I am going to be keeping this and hopefully reading it soon. I kind of just am not really in like a mystery place right now. I just have not been in the mood for mysteries but eventually I will be and then I will read this. So I talked about in my previous video my relationship to Sarah Dessen and how I am going to probably be unhauling a lot of her books that I own just because the like nostalgia factor um, is not really enough to keep some of them and one of those books is What Happened to Goodbye by Sarah Dessen obviously. I honestly couldn't tell you what this book is about. I don't remember the main character's name. I don't remember the love interest's name. I don't really remember the story at all. For that reason I think that it's safe to say that I can unhaul this one. The same is not true about the next book though and that is The Truth About Forever, also by Sarah Dessen. This is one of my favorite Sarah Dessen books. I have a very emotional connection to this book and this is one that I will keep forever just because it's very special to me. It's, it's one of my favorites by her. It's probably like in the top two. So I will for sure be keeping this one. Oh look, another Morgan Manson book. This is Since You've Been Gone. I have read this one, obviously, as I already said, I've read all of her books except for uh, Save the Day. I just don't really feel a super emotional attachment to this book. The only book of hers that I really feel an emotional attachment to is Second Chance Summer, which I already spoke about in my previous video. I don't know. I guess I'll hold on to this one for now and reevaluate at a later date. I, I just don't think I'm quite ready to give this one up yet. Next up, another mystery, My Husband's Wife by Jane Corey. I don't know what this book is about. I don't even honestly remember buying it, although obviously I did because it's here. I don't know. I really like your opinions on this one because 
I've never heard anybody talk about it and like I said I haven't really been in like a mystery place lately so I don't know when I'll ever be in the mood for this one or if I ever will be. I'm gonna tentatively put this one on the unhaul pile but I'd really love to know your opinions. The next book I have here is A Spool of Blue Thread by Ann Tyler. This is one that I think I bought a few years ago because I'm, I'm pretty sure it was nominated for the Women's Prize or the Man Booker or something. I think I'm gonna be keeping this just because I have heard so many good things about it. I think I actually saw somebody talk about it recently and like it made me want to like read it even more so I'm gonna be hanging on to this one and hopefully reading it soon. The next book is actually a book of short stories and that is How to Breathe Underwater by Julie Oringer. Oringer? I should know how to say that. I should always look up authors names pronunciations but I'm so bad at remembering to do that. This is one that I hear like endless good things about and although it's rare that I'm in the mood for short stories I know that eventually I will be in the mood for short stories and I will want to read this so I will be hanging on to it. And finally for this first shelf we've got Every Heart of Doorway by Shauna McGuire the first book in the Wayward Children series which is a series that I really really enjoy. I've spoken about it quite a bit over the last couple of years and this is one I will for sure be keeping I, I'm pretty sure in my brain this is my favorite book in the series so if if nothing else I will be keeping this one but I'll probably end up keeping the whole series to be honest. All right so moving into more green books and then some teals and blues we've got The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. One of my all-time favorite books. I don't think that this is even a question. Of course I will be keeping this book. Next up is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow which is the first book in a YA fantasy duology that I am still very interested in reading. I believe it's kind of a play on Snow White but I'm pretty sure this book follows the perspective of the evil queen and I think it's based all around like Chinese mythology and those are all things that excite me so I will for sure be keeping this book and I will also be keeping the sequel whenever it comes up in this process. The next book I have is California by Eden Lepucky which is a book that I bought because they spoke about it on the So Many Damn Books podcast. I started listening to that podcast last year and I like listened to a whole bunch of episodes right in a row and they talked about this book multiple times and they compared it to Station Eleven and books like that which obviously like I've already said Station Eleven is my favorite book so I bought this because it was compared to that and I still haven't read it. I'm kind of intimidated by it a little bit just because of that comparison like I don't want to be disappointed by it and it doesn't have the greatest reviews on Goodreads but it's one that I'm still really interested in and so I will for sure be keeping it. Next up is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, one of my all-time favorite books. This is one that will for sure be staying on my shelves even though it's been a couple of years since I read this and I still haven't continued on with the trilogy. This is one that still holds such a special place in my heart and one that I want to keep on my shelves forever. Next is Modern Lovers by Emma Straub. This is my very first book of the month book that I ever got. The very first month that I signed up for book of the month this was my selection. It's been sitting on my shelves now unread since June 2016 so four years and I have read Emma Straub's other two books The Vacationers and her newest book All Adults Here and I felt like they were both pretty average like middle of the road. I I had a lot of issues with All Adults Here which I just read I think just in August and so it's kind of put me off from her books in general and I don't really think that she's an author for me anymore and I have owned it for so long and have never one time felt compelled to pick it up so this one I'm going to be unhauling. Next up is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger which is also one of my favorite books of all time. One that I will for sure be keeping. For a very long time this was my favorite book of all time and it's only been in the last like year-ish that I feel like Station Eleven has kind of like topped it but it's still up there as just one of the best books I've ever read and I'm going to be keeping it forever. Next is The How and the Why by Cynthia Hand which I actually just read this month. This is the only book that I finished so far in September and the reason that I only finished this book so far in September is because I did not like this book at all. It took me a very long time to read even though it shouldn't have and it kind of has put me into the worst reading slump just because um, I just felt like it was such a slog to get through. I have a whole review on Goodreads. I haven't even reviewed this on my channel yet like I haven't talked about it anywhere. I I'm going to be unhauling this. I just did not enjoy it and I don't want to keep it. Next is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. We talked about Ruin and Rising in the first part of this project and the same is true for Siege and Storm. Obviously it's one of my favorite YA fantasy trilogies and even though it probably doesn't hold up like we've already mentioned uh, I can't unhaul it so this one is staying. Ignite Me by Tahira Mafi. This is the third book in the Shadowy trilogy which 
I read when it was like first popular and I I liked it a lot obviously like I bought all the books and I've, I've read them and, and I really enjoyed it I have a very specific memory I had a huge music history test and instead of studying for it I read this book the day it came out and I stayed up all night and had to study like after I finished it I associate this book with that because I I stayed up so late reading it and then had to stay up all night to study so I mean yeah I mean the series is fine it's of its time obviously like it has its merits and all that I think I'm actually going to unhaul it I think I'm actually gonna unhaul the whole trilogy just because I don't ever see myself like wanting to reread this trilogy at this point I just don't think I'll want to I, I kind of did want to when the new trilogy started coming out but then I heard such bad things about it that it kind of just put me off the series in general so I'm gonna just stick to like the happy memories I have of reading this book back in like 2012 2013 and just say goodbye to the whole trilogy. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is her second book and I obviously talked about everything I never told you in the first part of this project and how um, I have very mixed feelings about that one and I kind of wanted to reread it. This is one that I'm still really interested in and I actually haven't even owned it that long so this is one that will for sure be staying on my shelves. The next book is A Tale for the time being by Ruth Ozeki, which is a book that I read a few years ago and really, really enjoyed. It's just kind of like a surprise. I, I didn't really know what to expect going into it, but I read and, and actually really loved it. And so I'm going to be keeping this one for sure. And this is probably one that is due for a reread soon, just because this is a book that I think about a lot. Like I think about specific plot points in this book all the time. So this is one that I know is has stuck with me, obviously, and one that I think I think I want to reread soon. Maybe I should make a whole video about rereading all these books that I keep saying I'm going to reread. The next book is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. This is a pretty recent purchase. I think I've only owned it for a couple of months and will for sure be keeping it because I'm still really excited about it. Also, this spine is just like... It's just amazing. It's one of the best finds I've ever seen. Next up is Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward. I also talked about a Jasmine Ward book in part one of this Unhaul project. Here we are with another one of hers that I haven't read. This is one that I've owned for a while that I think I need to get to sooner rather than later. So this is one that I wanna put at the top of the TBR. If I'm not mistaken, this might actually be her first book or one of her earliest books, I don't know. And I also think it is YA or it, it lends itself really well to people who enjoy YA. So yeah, I'm putting this one at the top of my TBR. If I don't read it in the next like year or so, then probably do need to actually unhaul it, but I think I'll get to it soon. Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is another pretty recent addition to my TBR and one that I'm still really excited to read, so I will for sure be keeping this. A Woman Is No Man by Atof Room. This is Surprise, surprise, another Book of the Month selection. This is actually one of the last ones I got before I ended up canceling my Book of the Month subscription. It got a lot of hype and a lot of praise when it first came out, and it's one that I'm still really excited to read, so this one is for sure staying on my TBR. Next up is The Conspiracy of Us by Maggie Hall. This is the first book in the, what is the trilogy called? The Conspiracy of Us trilogy, I think? The Secret Societies trilogy? something about secret societies. I read this and I thought it was a ton of fun. It was so like action packed and it really kept me entertained. I think I binged the entire trilogy really close together, maybe even like all in one week, but I don't think I'm ever actually going to reread it. And if I do, I'd probably just listen to the audiobook, which is how I read the series in the first place. So this is one that I am going to unhaul, which makes me a little bit sad just because I do love the series so much, but I don't think there's any reason for me to hang on to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw the second book in the series on the unhaul pile as well. I never actually bought the third book so I just have the first two but I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of both of them. Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley is a book that I absolutely love and um, is one of like the oldest favorites on my shelf. I read this. I'm pretty sure I read it in high school and I really, really enjoyed it. John Corey Whaley is from Arkansas. He lives in Little Rock and this book is set in Arkansas, which um, I just love because there's just so few books out there that are set in Arkansas and capture the the spirit and um I don't know just like the feeling of Arkansas and this book does it so well and so this is one that will never leave my shelves even if I read it now and I didn't feel the same way as I did way back in like 2012 2013 when I originally read this I would never be able to get rid of it just because it is it's just so it's so personal to me. I just, I love it so much. Next up is The Book of Unknown Americans by Christina Enriquez. I bought this one because I'm pretty sure I saw Rincey talk about it. I really want to read this, but I've tried to read it a couple times and I just 
can't really seem to get into it. I think like the first time I maybe read up to page 50 and then the second time I tried to read it I couldn't even make it that far and I just I don't know if it's the writing style or if it's just not like I haven't been in the right mood to read it. So I think I'm going to tentatively put this one on the unhaul pile but if you can make a compelling argument for why I should keep it then I would really love to know because this is one that I I want to keep but I just don't think I will like it or I just don't think I'll be able to get into it just because of like the fact that I haven't been able to get into it the couple of times I've tried to read it. And Again by Jessica Chiarella is a book that I got because Joss from Squibbles Reads read and just raved and raved about it like years ago and I actually did read the first part of this, the first chapter in a try a chapter unhaul tag when I used to do those like last year and I was really interested in it and I'm still really interested in it so I'm going to be keeping it but I'm putting the like the time constraint on it just because I have owned this for so long that I need to actually like go ahead and read it. This one I'm gonna say like if I don't read it in the next six months I need to say goodbye to it. I really think once I read it I'll like it. I just need to like actually like motivate myself to read it. So if I put that at a deadline then maybe that'll like make me want to read it. Maybe this isn't the right way to go about it. I don't really know but it's the way I'm going about it. Next up we have Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller which is a book that I have read and I absolutely loved when I read it. I, I'm pretty sure I have a full review of this one on my channel as well so if I can find that I'll leave a link to it. I read it in a weird time when I wasn't really enjoying anything and then I read this and I it really stuck out to me and I really really enjoyed it so I think that's why it's so special to me. I don't know that I would feel the same way about it now but when I read it initially I really really loved it and so I will be keeping it and maybe it's one that I will reread at some point. And finally for this shelf we have The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. This is the third book in the Remnant Chronicles and as I have already said obviously I'm going to be keeping this entire trilogy so this one's staying as well. <laughs> I bumped the camera so the angle might be a little bit different but we are on to the last shelf of this video and we're starting off with The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand. I read this one last year or the year before and I thought it was okay. I, I feel much the same as I do about the how and the why. I feel like there were some parts of this that were great and there were parts of it that I didn't jive with so much and so I don't think I'm ever actually going to want to reread this and the only reason I've held on to it so long is because I think the cover is just absolutely beautiful but that's not really a reason to keep a book that you don't like love so I'm going to be unhauling this one. Next up we have The Mothers by Britt Bennett. This is a book that I read last year or the year before and I really enjoyed it so I'm going to be keeping it. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr which is one of my favorite World War II historical fiction books. We talked about previously how much I love war historical fiction and this one is one of the best ones I've ever read. This is also one that I feel like is due for a reread soon so of course I will be keeping it. Next is Bel Canto by Ann Patchett. This is a book that I have been interested in for a very long time. I remember when I was in high school one of my friends and I we went to a bookstore together and she bought this book and she read it and she really enjoyed it and she re recommended it to me. Although I've owned it for a while I still haven't picked it up for some reason but it's one that I for sure want to get to soon so I will be hanging on to this one. Shelter by Jun Yoon which is a book that was super popular a couple of years ago and so many people just like raved and raved about it. I feel like it was one of the booktube darlings and that's why I bought it and then it's still been sitting on my shelves unread ever since then. We all have those books that we think we're going to love and so we want to read them at the perfect time and I think that's what this book is for me. I just feel like I haven't found the perfect time to read it yet which I know is silly because there's never going to be like the ideal time to read any kind of book so I just need to bite the bullet and actually read this so maybe I will. Maybe if I don't read it in the next six months I should get rid of it so maybe I need to like put that constraint on myself so I'll actually get around to it. The Dinner by Herman Koch is a book that I have been interested in reading for a long time. This one's been on my TBR for a while and I'm pretty sure Cole bought this for me for Christmas. Maybe our first or second Christmas together I think he gave me this and so I don't want to get rid of it. I also still really want to read it so I'm gonna keep it. We Were Liars by E. Lockhart was one of my favorite books the year that I read it, the year it came out and it kind of took booktube by storm and I feel like everybody was reading it and it was either like you really loved it or you absolutely hated it and I just happened to fall on the really loved it side. I also um, specifically remember when I read this book because my family was going on a vacation and I read this in the car on the way to the beach. I read the entire thing in the car ride and I usually get car sick when I try to read but I was so invested in this book that I didn't get sick at all. Although I know it's not for everybody and I know that it's probably like very flawed and if I read it now I probably wouldn't enjoy it near as much. I, I don't think I'm gonna get rid of it just because I do I do I did really enjoy it when I read it initially. Along the same lines we have The Skies Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. I 
read this book, I don't know, so long ago. Obviously, Janie Nelson is more popular now. She's kind of really known for, um, what's the other book by her? I'll Give You the Sun, which is great and definitely deserves all the praise and hype that it gets. This is her first book. I have owned it and I read it such a long time ago because I don't even think you can find this cover of this book anymore. You can only find the one with the colorful lines on it, I'm pretty sure. This was one of my favorite books for a really long time, and I know for a fact that if I read it right now, I wouldn't enjoy it nearly as much, which is why I've never reread it, but I also can't unhaul it just because, uh, it's it's got such a special place in my heart that I can't let it go. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante is another book that kind of took booktube by storm. I feel like this whole series um, is very well loved here on booktube and uh, I bought it obviously because I wanted to read and love it as well and I haven't. I haven't read it. I haven't even tried to read it one time. I still want to read it. It's definitely still on my TBR, but I think I need to push it to the top of the TBR and kind of give myself a, a, a window to read it or unhaul it just because I'm pretty sure I've owned this book since 2014 or 2015. So we're coming upon like way too long at this point. So like if I don't read it in the next year, it's gotta go. Oh look, another Sarah Dessen book. Another one that I will be unhauling just because again, like some previous ones I've talked about in this video, I don't remember the main character's name. I don't remember the story at all. And it's not one that I feel fondly enough about to want to like ever try to reread. So this is another one that is going to get unhauled. A Long Way Down by Nick Hornby is a book that I bought solely because I saw the trailer for the movie and the movie looked entertaining. And so I wanted to read the book that it was based on, but I have owned this book for a really long time. I think since maybe 2013 and I have never one time felt compelled to pick it up. I've never tried to read it. I probably haven't even like read the first line of this book to be honest. So I am going to be unhauled this one. One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid, another one of my all-time favorite books and another one that I will for sure be keeping. This was the very first Taylor Jenkins Reid book that I ever read. It's what made me fall in love with her as an author and so I am going to be keeping it. Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna McGuire, as I already said, I'm going to be keeping all the books in the Wayward Children series. This is book number three. It's actually probably one of my like lesser favorites of the series, but I'm still going to be keeping it because I want to keep all of them. Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. We don't have to talk about it. This is my favorite book in the uh, Illuminae Files trilogy, so for sure I'm going to be keeping it. There was never a question of me getting rid of this book because it's, it's amazing. It's so good. The Rehearsal by Eleanor Catton. I don't remember what this book is about. I don't even remember where I heard about it. Obviously Eleanor Catton, I know her as the winner of the Man Booker Prize when she wrote The Luminaries, which is also on my shelves. You'll be seeing that in part three of this <laughs> video series. This is one, I think it takes place at a dance school and I don't really know what it's about beyond that. I don't think I want to keep it, honestly. I don't think, I've never, I've owned it for a while and I've never wanted to pick it up. Like I've never felt compelled to start it. So I think I'm going to unhaul this one. The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier. This is the second book in the Wrath and the Dawn duology. I spoke about the first book in the first video of the series. It's not like my favorite thing ever, but I do have such like fond memories of reading it and it's one that I'm just not re quite ready to unhaul. So I will be holding on to this one as well. Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore. This is the third and final book in the Graceling Realm trilogy. We talked about this trilogy a little bit in the first video, so I'm not going to rehash all that. Obviously I will be keeping this. This is one that I'm still really excited to read. I just bought it not too long ago and I can't read this one until I read book two, which I haven't gotten around to yet. So this one's staying on the TBR. We've also got Mockingjay by Susan Collins the third book in the Hunger Games trilogy. Obviously we've already spoken about it. I'm going to be keeping it because it's one of my favorite things ever and uh, something that I probably am going to reread soon just because I want to. And finally for this video we've got The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen. I feel like we went through a lot of Sarah Dessen books in this video. This one I am going to be keeping. This is her newest book and it was such a breath of fresh air compared to her last couple of books that I don't want to unhaul this one. I might change my mind in a few months and decide to unhaul it but for now this one is staying. Okay so that is the end of part two. In this section we talked about 65 books. 26 of those books I have read and I am deciding to keep. There are 11 books that I have read but I am deciding to unhaul. There are 
15 books that I have not read, but they're also not really at the top of my priority list right now because these are all books that I'm still really excited for and I don't think I'm going to need motivation to actually get to them. There are eight books that I have decided that if I don't read in a certain amount of time, I am probably going to go ahead and unhaul them because I feel like I need some motivation to get these. Not necessarily because I'm not excited to read them, but because I've owned them for so long that there is no reason why I shouldn't have already read them. So I kind of need the kick in the pants to actually get to them finally. And in this round of unhauling there are five books that I have not read but I've decided to go ahead and take off my TBR which is the same amount of books that I decided to unhaul in the first round of unhauling. So so far my TBR has decreased by 10 but I don't think that that's quite enough for the amount of books that I have decided to keep and am really excited about. I um, I'm not doing so hot but I mean any progress is better than no progress, right? So these five books are going off of my TBR. Let me know down in the comments any thoughts, opinions, feelings that you have about any of the books that I mentioned in this video, especially the books that I have added to like the top of the TBR, like my high priority TBR books. I'd really love to know your opinions on those. And even the books that I have deemed like not top priority, not like time constraints or I'm unhauling them. I'd also like to know if there's any of those books that you think that I probably won't like or that you personally didn't like. I'd like to know all the stuff down in the comments. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again very soon. Bye!